The Witch Queen campaign was definitely a great experience, possibly one of the best Destiny expansions to date thus far. This is the setup for the conclusion to the Light and Darkness saga in just a couple of years, and boy did it deliver. Today we are going to recap and analyze the Witch Queen cinematic campaign. From the truth about Sabathun's light to the leader of the darkness, you won't want to miss this one. Spoilers are obviously ahead. The campaign begins with Ikora Ray meeting Eris Morn on Mars, which has returned after vanishing thanks to the darkness back in Season of the Arrivals. Eris Morn speaks of an artifact on Mars that is super important, an artifact of darkness. As the two continue to speak, a giant cabal mat cannon is moved into position and pointed towards Sabathun's ship which hovers over the red planet. Secure the camp! It seems they have another target. What are they aiming at? Savathun. Savathun was last seen at the end of Season of the Lost, breaking free from that crystal prison and casting a spell to teleport herself away, switching places with Osiris. But now here in Witch Queen, not long after, she's making an appearance. And this is quite strange for a couple of reasons, and why is she even on Mars? After getting shot through the mat cannon and arriving on the ship, we fight through Hive and eventually learn of Hive Lightbearers. Sabathun has taken the power of the light somehow, and those Hive that are our enemies now wield the same power as we do, and can be resurrected by a ghost. That's impossible. Is that a ghost? It can't be. Get me closer, Guardian. I have to see. Oh. I can't believe it. Ghost building the hive. We have to stop its ghost. There's no other way. That thing is not like me. You see that, right? I... I can't believe this. We have to keep going. Oh, Traveler, what has she done to you? After defeating the first light bearer we come across, we begin to follow Savathun's trail into a portal. This portal leads us to Savathun's throne world, a pocket dimension most hive gods have that is sort of a safe haven or backup plan if they die in the real world. In the throne world, after fighting more light bearers, we find Savathun and take her down pretty easily but this was a trick. Come on, you're strong, but that was too easy. It did seem too easy, didn't it? Guardian? Guardian, do you read me? We're here, Ikora. We're back on Mars. Back? From where? Sabathun's throne world. Sabathun stole the light. But that's impossible, isn't it? Impossible? With Sabathun, nothing is impossible. Upon returning to Mars, we turn a darkness artifact into a weapon called the Glaive. Ikora says this about the relic. The relic rendered a full blueprint out of a single fragment. Almost as if you were shaping that weapon based on its own memory. Which parallels the distortions all over the planet. Open wounds where the past bleeds into the present. 
Somehow the relic can manipulate time. The relic we now have is said to be able to manipulate time somehow, bleeding past into present. Kind of like how we see at the beginning of the DLC, and did Savathun acquire this power for herself? Ikora dispatches us back into the throne world to find more answers. Working alongside her and her hidden spies, we infiltrate the Witch Queen's home, which is now imbued with light. If you're familiar with Destiny, the Hive worship the darkness, but with this new power of the light, Savathun has converted this throne world and you can really see the effects that the light has here, converting the entire aesthetic. You've got these dark swamps which represent the darkness and the light areas which represent, well, the light. During this mission, a strange voice comes across the channels. Hey, listen closely. You're not supposed to be here. Guardians aren't safe in a place like this. Who is this? Well, that's need to know, pal, and you don't. Uh, need to know. I mean, look, just get out before Sabathun and her light-up goons realize you're here. This Finch agrees to meet with us if we come alone to tell us more about how the Hive got the light. As it turns out, Finch is a Hive ghost, one that first thought that giving the Hive the light was neutral, that maybe they did deserve it until they started killing guardians with it. Finch tells us of a temple that might hold some answers. All you need to know, us wandering ghosts gave into the hive believing we'd found purpose and, well, peer pressure's a hell of a thing, huh? I'll tell you what, I don't buy it, not anymore. The Witch Queen's up to something and, you know, maybe together we get to the bottom of it, huh? There's an old hive temple nearby with Savathun's secrets inside. That is all I know. The what and the why? Pff, that's your game. Yeah. This scorn-filled temple holds Sagira, Osiris' ghost that was destroyed by Zivuarath's forces back in Season of the Hunt. Maybe we can learn something from Sagira. When we find her shell, we hear this. Grab Sagira and go, okay? I stand before a being with a thousand names. It whispers one. Who witness? Remember it. Remember that name. Who's the witness? No clue. I've never heard that name before. Hey, that's exciting though, right? A lead! What's most exciting is that you were telling the truth. Savathun speaks of the witness. Definitely remember this for later. Ikora says that with Sagira's shell, she was able to pick up a fingerprint. The relic we found awoke a new ability within us, one that reveals some lies beneath the surface. This witness may be tied to how Sabathun stole the light. Ikora sent us out back to the Europan Pyramid to trace this fingerprint, to strengthen this new ability that apparently lies within us. On Europa, we fight some Cabal defectors who appear to be tampering with the darkness. Fighting our way inside the ship, we eventually try to commune with the darkness statue, which appears to do nothing at first, but Eris confirms that the pyramid did respond to our presence, and with this, we can now access Sagira's memory. Manifest. Take Sagira's shell there, then we'll see if I'm correct. Hopefully, this is how we'll finally find some answers. I stand before a being with a thousand names. It whispers one. Who witness? Remember it. Remember that name. It is not darkness, but something that wears it like a cloak. It gives darkness a wicked shape. I refuse to be its servant. I spent centuries crafting schemes, playing tricks, finding loopholes. And then I select my new name. A man with many enemies and few friends. But those friends know secrets. About the light. About new beginnings. My plan takes shape. This memory shows us Savathun's thoughts. This witness commands the darkness and Savathun grew sick of its control. 
constantly having to feed her worm and grow more strength through this sword logic. So she began to turn to the light. With the first memory of Sagira down, it seems we could be onto something. Finch tells us of another temple, a temple created for Oryx in Savathun's throne world. He says Sagira was originally placed in a temple dedicated to Zivu Arath, so maybe Oryx's section has another artifact. Ever heard of Oryx? The Taken King? Savathun's brother? Yeah. Okay, I thought so. Savathun's got a temple dedicated to him. In the temple, we fight more hive armies and eventually confront Alak Hul, the Light Blade, who is back from Destiny 1 as a hive light bearer. Alak Hul is killed, but his ghost escapes. We pick up the artifact, which is a piece of the Tablets of Ruin. If you remember back to King's Fall, these are the same ones you see here. This is a piece of it, and these are the tablets where Oryx learned the power to take. With this piece from the Alakul fight, we revisit the altar and experience another memory. I will never be the Taken Queen. I refuse to play second fiddle to my brother Oryx. When Oryx carved the Tablets of Ruin, he described the ability to create the Taken. But Oryx's chisel was affected by viral power from the deep. I studied its vermicular path. I read between the lines. The tablets hide a riddle. The answer to this riddle is something greater than the power to take. It is the power of the witness to move worlds from one reality to another. This is what I will do. I will not take. I will give. I will grant the Traveler a safe haven away from its enemies. And once it hangs in the sky of my throne world, I will seal it away. So Savathun studied Oryx's tablet and learned something. Yes, Oryx had the power to take which he learned from the darkness and the witness, but the Witness had its own power, above that of the mighty Taken King. This was the power to move worlds from one reality to another. Savathun doesn't want to be like Oryx, she doesn't want to be the Taken Queen. She would rather use this power of the Witness so she can move the Traveler to the safety of her throne world and seal it away. Akkor tells us the Witness is responsible for our planets disappearing and not the darkness. Ikora feels like this is partly her fault as she gave Osiris access to files in the city and let her guard down over the last couple of seasons. Back in the throne world, Finch speaks of yet another temple, this time one dedicated to Sathona, Savathun before she became a hive god and ingested that worm. After descending and overlooking this awesome temple, we find a statue of Sathona holding a hive worm, which we pick up. At this moment, an Ahamkara illusion bursts in and a massive fight goes down, which was pretty epic. Of course that Ahamkara would have one final move. We gotta find a way out, fast. Guardian, come in. Are you there? We're here, Igor. We're on our way to the surface now. And you've got the option, right? Otherwise, this was a huge waste of time. We got it. Thanks for the concern, Finch. With this worm familiar, we attempt to return to the altar to view another memory, but the portal is blocked this time. We can't access this memory for some reason. Returning to Mars, we see Ikora, Zavala, and Eris having a meeting. Zavala is super angry at Ikora for not including him and the Vanguard in this operation, or at least letting him know what's going on. Guardian, we can discuss this more later. My point, Ikora, is that we are meant to be a team. Ikora's instincts are the only reason we've come so close to the truth. This new lead puts it firmly within our grasp. All right then, you and the Guardian follow up. Keep me posted. 
A trusted source has informed us of new evidence. A memento from Savathun's last known location before her conversion to the light. Eris points us in the direction of an apothecary in the throne world, a place where a piece of Savathun's crystal prison may still exist. After she transported herself out at the end of Season of the Lost, she may have went here, and this might be the key we are looking for to learn this truth. We do find a crystal shard here thanks to Ikora's knowledge and visit the altar once more to view the memory. Devotion inspires bravery. Bravery inspires sacrifice. And sacrifice. That was Savathun, all right. But what does that mean? This is the evidence we've been seeking all along. Ikora's instincts were correct, after all. Indeed. But we don't have our answers yet. Go unlock the memory, Guardian. Then let's see if this cracks the case. I saw the end before it happened. My own death. Brought on by the separation from my power. And in these final moments, I look to the sky. Hello, old friend. I've chased you for a long time. First as an enemy, then as a collector. And finally, now, a supplicant. What is it the Guardians say? Devotion inspires bravery. Bravery inspires sacrifice. And sacrifice... Thanks to this cutscene, we learned Savathun did appear to die after she teleported away, but a ghost chose to revive her. Back at the altar, Savathun appears and thanks us, but for what? Well, Savathun got revived by the light, meaning she would in theory lose her memory of her past life, and what we've been doing with these memories may have returned them to her, or this may have just been a big trick. Reminding me for telling my story. Wait. What is she talking about? She remembers. We helped her remember. Thanks for the memories, Guardian. We have to leave. Back in the city, the Vanguard hold a meeting. Eris explains how the Traveler left the Elixni when the Witness arrived, and maybe it's planning to do the same thing it's always done for centuries, is to leave when the Witness arrives. It may leave Earth. But 
Why would she need us to recover her memories if she never lost them in the first place? This has to be another trick. A lie to fool us into surrendering the Traveler without a fight. Fallen tell the same story. When the Witness and its Black Fleet came to call, the Traveler moved on to our system. Where it sacrificed itself to save humanity from the same forces. Forces which included the Hive! Ikora says, this doesn't matter. If Sabathun takes the Traveler, we lose the light. So we need to defend humanity whatever the cost and prepare for the arrival of the Witness. Ikora believes that this worm fragment we retrieved down by that Ahamkara fight may actually be the worm familiar itself, but calcified from age. She plans to use the artifact we found to slice into the past and learn the truth. And that truth is quite frightening. In the Books of Sorrows, we were always told of an apocalyptic event on the homeworld of the Hive. So the three sisters dove into the deep and took the power of the darkness from the worm gods so that their species could survive. This is how they became the Hive. But as this turns out, the Witness tricked the Hive. The Traveler was among the moons in their system, and the Hive could have actually became disciples of the Light, but the Witness would step in and trick Savathun herself telling her that this great cataclysm was on the way and that the only way to save their species was to dive into the deep. So, the Witness made Savathun and her sisters wield the darkness when they could have had the light. The last mission was not to stop Savathun from stealing the Traveler thanks to the trick she learned from the Witness. The plan was to infiltrate a ritual and play this last memory which we just seen, and maybe it'll throw things off the rail and work in our favor. The Traveler! Ikora, the Traveler is already here. I think we're too late. We are in the domain of the God of Cunning. Things are never what they seem. It's not too late. I can feel it. Now that the Traveler sees what Savathun is doing, why won't it take the light away from her? Why is it just letting this happen? I don't know why. We may never know. But we know what we need to do to protect the last city. Stop the ritual. Protect our connection to the light. Humanity needs you. 
both of you. Remember the plan, Guardian. Stop the ritual by whatever means necessary. Without the light, the last city is defenseless. I'm so glad you're here to see this. We show Savathun the memory and she gets angry. These frail siblings will soon be claimed by the light. Unless we claim them first. What is this? How did you... We will tell the most cunning sibling of the cataclysm. A prophecy of great loss. No. No, that's not what happened. The Traveler never came to us. We were forced to choose the Deep. How could I have missed this? So now you want to play games? Then let's play! So you're the expert! The expert on me! On the high! On trickery! Is that what you really think? Interesting. I miscalculated. So did you, Guardian. So protective of your traveler that you wouldn't let me keep it safe. But the witness is coming. The game is yours to play now. Yours to win or lose. Just don't say, I didn't warn you. Where did your ghost go? Guardian, I just got the message. The Traveler is back in the last city. Is it done? Is Salvathun... She's dead. But her ghost got away. Good enough. Hold your position. The Hidden are coming to secure the remains. Good work, Guardian. You did the right thing. Now what? Now, we prepare for the witness and stop the next collapse. Sabathun is killed. She speaks of the witness on its way and that the battle is ours to win or perhaps lose. Sabathun's ghost escapes, meaning that technically, yes, she could be brought back like other characters in the past like Aramis. Ikora sends in a team to retrieve the body, so we do need to hide that thing away and make sure the ghost can't really find it to revive it, because that would be quite the issue. The final cutscene after this is crazy, a peek at the witness itself. Take a look.
You promise them life, but deliver only death, as you have for so many before. Enough. Enough death. Enough life. You have no pieces left to place. The game is over. Do not be afraid. Your pale heart holds the key. This time, there is no escape. Now I'm going to make a video on this character more in depth, but we can see some crazy reveals here. The witness speaks about how the traveler has done enough that it is now on its way to complete the final shape. There should be no light, no dark, and no more death. The witness, as told, has the power to move worlds in and out of reality. We can see all of these worlds here like Mars, which may explain how it has returned unless Savathun returned it using the power she learned herself. The witness is pretty crazy looking and it's going to be super exciting to see how this unfolds in future expansions. So there we have it, Savathun is dead for now, the witness on its way, and we must now prepare for this second collapse. So that's pretty much it for the main story, it does continue with a little side quest for the parasite exotic where Marasov guides you to learn from Savathun's worm, but that's a tale for another time. If you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, my name's Evade, and I'll catch you guardians in the next one.